This program is presented by University of California Television. Like what you learn? Visit our website or follow us on Facebook and Twitter to keep up with the latest UCTV programs. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here today to, uh, uh, and have the opportunity to present our work where we've been mining um, large publicly available data sets in order to discover tumor-specific molecules. Um, <clears throat> the work that I'm going to present is currently in press at PNAS, and I was told by the editors of PNAS that if I was to present it, I had to tell the audience that it is under embargo currently because of that status. All right, so um, <clears throat> there this work was actually broken up into three separate goals. The first goal was to figure out how we could take advantage of these large public databases that are currently coming online. Um, and these, these databases have been um, largely funded by the NIH and other uh, institutes, um, generating data that gives us information about both cancer samples as well as uh, normal samples. And the goal here was to identify um, for, for our, our trial period, this pilot project, was to determine if we could identify ovarian-specific um, messenger RNA molecules. And so we did that. We came up with a long list, over 300,000 putative um, cancer-specific messenger RNA molecules. And then we set out in the laboratory uh, to experimentally validate and, and identify a set that truly was tumor-specific. And we did that um, by instituting high-throughput technologies at the uh, Institute for Genomic Medicine uh, core. And this allowed us to identify 33 molecules, which are um, cancer-specific or are very highly restricted expression patterns in, in normal tissues. And then the third part was to see, could we actually translate these into something meaningful in a, for um, the health of uh, um, women? And so what we did is, uh, working with uh, physicians at the um, Morris Cancer Center, we are um, currently in the process of looking at these to see, can we use these ovarian cancer-specific uh, messenger RNA molecules to develop a early detection of ovarian cancer assay? And our initial results, which I will show later, um, indicate that we are having very promising results with this. So there have been a lot of efforts to date that have focused on looking at the DNA in tumors in order to identify alterations or mutations. Um, but what we've decided to do is, is take um, a, a, or focus on RNA to do for tumor-specific discovery. And the reason why we um, have focused on RNA is because really the expression, when you look at the RNA expression profile in a cell, it really reflects the cellular phenotype. And in this um, case, what we're looking for is malignant phenotypes. There are thousands of copies um, of RNA in a cell as opposed to DNA, which is diploid too. And so it would afford us, if we could identify uh, cancer-specific um, molecules, it afford us the ability to develop highly sensitive diagnostic um, and early detection assays. And then, additionally, by looking at the RNA molecules, we would be able to identify potential candidates for immunotherapies, including monoclonal antibody targets and vaccines. So I think everybody in the room, or most people in the room, is well aware of the fact that DNA is translated into RNA, and this is frequently what's known as a gene. And what's becoming more and more apparent to us over the last few years is that there is a, a process called alternative splicing. And from this alternative splicing, we get a variety of different messenger RNA isoforms. So here you can see all the exons are, are combined together. Here we have exon 3 that's missing and so forth. And these different messenger RNA isoforms actually give rise to different protein isoforms. 
and these different protein isoforms can have different functions. And importantly for us, they can present different aspects which um, pro uh, provide um, immunogenic targets that we can use. So there's about 22,000 genes in the human genome. And when one looks at these genes in the different ways that they get spliced, we have over 300,000 messenger RNA isoforms. So what we're looking at here is the locus that encodes the HER2 gene, all right? And um, each one of these is a different isoform from that locus. Now, historically, people have been trying to identify cancer-specific genes, all right? And you can look here and you can see, if you're, if you're looking at any specific sequence in the gene, it might be hard to do that because there's over 25 different isoforms expressed from this gene. However, if you focus in on one particular um, gene variant, one particular isoform, you have a much more high chance of identifying that something that's uh, tumor specific. So our challenge really was to identify tumor specific messenger RNA isoforms. And what I'm going to present here is an overview of our solution, and then in the next few slides, I'll go over it in more detail, all right? So we've developed um, a suite of bioinformatic algorithms and um, other processes which allow us to take advantage of these large publicly, publicly generated data sets, including the gene and tissue expression data set, which has, um, I think the last count was, over 900 donors, you know, 20 to 30 tissues from each individual, large data set, all right? And looking at normal RNA-seq data sets from this database, as well as using the Cancer Genome Atlas, which is looking at um, the 30 major cancer types that occur, or tumor types that occur. And um, we, for this pilot funding, or this pilot project, we looked at over 296 high-grade serious ovarian RNA data sets. Now, as Larry spoke earlier, um, there's about um, there's a, about a hundred billion stars in um, uh, in the galaxy, and what we're looking at here is when we look at the number of reads compro composing these data sets, we're looking at 120 billion reads. All right, and so we needed to really come up with custom algorithms that allowed us to analyze these reads in a way that we could look to see which reads or which isoforms are expressed only in cancer and not in normal tissues. We then rank prioritize those, coming up with a rank list of over 300,000, came up with a way to analyze in the laboratory in an isoform-specific manner um, to test to see which of these isoforms are in tumors and which ones are in, um, actually in normal and then came up with a way to do these high-throughput RTQPSR experiments to identify tumor-specific messenger RNA isoforms. So actually, <clears throat> generating the RNA-seq data, uh, data sets is uh, quite straightforward. You simply you take a tissue, you isolate the messenger RNAs, you fragment them, put on these linkers, which are shown as the blue and the red, and then you use um, standard uh, commercially available sequencing technology to generate these data. And again, um, overall, we were generating in the realms of billions of um, reads. Although this is straightforward, it's actually quite costly. And that's why the uh, large consortiums are get, getting together, generating these very large data sets, which individual um, individuals such as myself and others are analyzing in a variety of different formats. But um, although the data generation is straightforward, actually trying to use it is quite complicated. All right? So how do you take this pile of reads that you get out of that sequencing platform and actually try to figure out what isoforms are being expressed 
in, the, in that tissue of interest, all right? So going from this to figuring out this isoform's expressed, but none of the others are, is what the challenge is. And so in order to do this, we've uh, taken uh, standard RNA-seq computational workflows and have actually optimized them quite a bit. We, uh, t we align the reads to the genome, which is quite computationally complex, instead of the transcriptome. But this allows us to identify even single base pair mismatches, all right? We have uh, generated a database of gene isoforms, which is actually a compendium of um, all the databases that currently exist in the world. And this was uh, quite an intensive process to do that and to weed out redundancies and things of that nature, especially considering that each database has its own nomenclature. But it's really taking these new forms of data and, and having them input into integration algorithms, which this one was actually written by Lior Pachter, who's at UC Berkeley, um, that allows us to then look at the isoform expression level estimates and gain insights into which ones we think are expressed only in tumors. We then go through and experimentally validate those. And so what we're looking at here is the results of our RTQPCR um, experiments. And each, if you look at each square, um, the lighter the color, the higher the expression in that um, square all the way down to the darker the color, black meaning it's not expressed. And in each row, what we have is a uh, gene and the isoform for that gene. Remember, not the gene, but a specific isoform. These are, we're looking at just one isoform from each gene. And in each column, we have, these are 12 different ovarian tumors and a variety of different normal as well as uh, fallopian and ovary, four fallopian and four ovary. It's assumed that the ovarian cancer comes from either the fallopian or the ovaries. And what you can see is that we have identified a set of um, <coughs> isoforms from a variety of genes, many of which make uh, perfect sense, that appear to be tumor specific or have a very limited expression in normal tissues. And so this is very exciting, all right? But what we really wanted to know is, can we actually move this forward in the clinic and use these ovarian cancer-specific messenger RNA isoforms in order to develop an early detection um, assay? And so um, uh, can, uh, ovarian cancer has had a pretty steady um, rate of um, um, uh, new cases since from, you know, from ever since 1992, where there's about um, 15 individuals per 100,000 females who um, are present with ovarian cancer on an annual basis. This results in about, I'm sorry, it results in a, about 22,000 cases per year and about, which is about 1.3% of all new cases of cancer, whereas about 14,000 individuals die per year, which is about 2.4% um, of all cancer deaths. And a rather low uh, percent surviving rate of about 45%. However, the vast majority of ovarian cancers are detected late, at a late stage. And when you're detected at a late stage, you have a very, very low survival rate. Whereas if you're detected, if the ovarian cancer is detected at an early stage, you can actually have a very high five-year survival rate. So the goal is how can we start detecting ovarian cancer at early stages in order to really increase the five-year survival rate? So um, just a few years back, um, Bert Vogelstein's group at uh, John Hopkins realized that the ovarian cancer cells are sloughed off and they actually make their way down the endocervical canal and can actually be gathered in a um, typical type of pap smear that occurs and can occur in an annual gynecological test. And so 
what we wanted to know is could we actually create a test for these tumor-specific isoforms that we're gathering that could be assayed in an annual type of pap smear. And so to do this, we're working very closely with um, Dr. Cheryl Saez, who is a physician at the Morris Cancer Center, and she's an early referral site for individuals that are newly diagnosed with ovarian cancer. And so our goal is to use these messenger RNA tumor isoforms in a PAP test and endometrial biopsies from newly diagnosed ovarian cancer samples. We want to see, can we actually observe the cancer there? And so we've established a proof of approach clinical trial. We are gathering 20 women with, um, that have this newly um, diagnosed ovarian cancer. We started in February, and we already have um, analyzed uh, several individuals. And so again, what we're looking at here are, these are the uh, genes. This is the uh, isoform, specific isoform number. Here's our tumors. And here are the first two individuals that have entered into our clinical trial. And what you can see is that, indeed, we are able to, in this very standard type of PAP test, identify these messenger RNA isoforms, um, which is actually quite promising in indicating that um, this approach may indeed um, be able to be implemented and um, help with this issue of early diagnostics um, for ovarian cancer. So the question really is, why hasn't this type of work been done before? And it is a variety of information um, approaches, including that the techniques for generating these data are relatively new. These large databases are just, they're continuing to expand, they're continuing to grow, um, but they're, they're just coming online and becoming available. And because of the fact that you know, we really need multidisciplinary teams. We need people that are well versed in computer science, that um, you know can handle these large data sets. We need individuals that actually know what the important biological questions are. How you know how are we going to develop drug therapeutics? Um, and and these required skills and expertise are still emerging. Um, in, in our current graduate students, this is something that we're really uh, pushing for, but there aren't a lot of people that can handle these types of data, and the, the supercomputing costs are actually quite expensive still. So the next steps for this particular project are we're going to um, continue to look at 30 major tumor types um, that represent the significant fraction of the worldwide cancer burden. And we're going to apply this systematic process, which we actually have spent years developing and um, putting in place, to these 30 major tumor types. And we're, um, from the resulting data, we intend to evaluate the options of what we find with these tumor-specific messenger RNA isoforms for diagnostics as well as therapeutics across the cancer types. And um, finally, what I would like to do is acknowledge this multidisciplinary team that we've put in place. It really is um, based on discussions that um, I've been having with Dennis Carson for four or five years now. Dennis is a um, um, seasoned and well-versed um, physician scientist who has uh, um, developed and been in the field of developing cancer therapeutics for a long time. Uh, Kristen Barrett, who is a uh, computational scientist who is um, <clears throat> interested in, in a very capable in handling these very large data sets and has been working closely with Dennis and myself for about four years. Um, Cheryl, who, um, science, who's the uh, physician at the Morris Cancer Center, um, who's an early uh, you know, uh, referral site for um, uh, ovarian cancer. Kristen Jepson, who runs the IGM Genomics Center and is a um, very talented molecular biologist who helps um, not only myself put in together assays like of this nature, but is helping the UCSD campus at large develop um, assays of this nature, which allow us to take predictions from high throughput big data 
actually um, look at them in an experimental manner and, and, and test those hypotheses that we generate. As well as, um, I'd like to give special thanks to the funders of this um, particular uh, project, pilot project, the Iris and um, Matthew Center for the Early Detection of Ovarian Cancer, as well as uh, calling stream kicking for the dream. Um, we, of course, are looking for additional funding to help um, expand this uh, work in um, performing these types of analyses on additional tumor types. Thank you very much.